Hi, I'm Viviana Wathridge, Professor of Clinical Psychology at Macquarie University. I'm also the Director of our Lifespan Health and Wellbeing Research Unit. Today I'm going to talk to you about ageing well. Now I think we all want to age well. We all want to be that person that ages with our fitness and our cognition intact, socialising with our friends until the end. Now interestingly, ageing well, is, we can actually do things to help us age well at every stage of life. But today we're going to talk about what you can do from midlife and into the older adult years. Now the things we're going to talk about today, we know will reduce your risk for developing dementia, frailty, cardiovascular disease, stroke, cancer, reduce your risk for falls, and reduce the chance you'd need to be placed in a residential aged care facility. So, before we get to that, because a lot of the strategies we're going to talk about are pretty common sense, and things you probably already know. We're going to start by thinking about what is it that you can do to try and make these, uh, these part of your lifestyle, part of your routine. We've all made plans to improve our health, to make changes to lifestyle, and then sometimes we try them, sometimes we don't, but often we don't sustain these behaviours. So three things you can do to try and embed these new routines into your life. First of all, it's never too late to start. So don't use excuses that you're too old or you're too busy or you're too tired. Now is the time to take action. So don't procrastinate and maybe start today. Secondly, it's important you keep whatever you do simple. The more simple the strategy is that you are apply, the easier it's going to be for you to embed that into your life and do every single day. And thirdly, we're gonna think about easy wins. So that is, we're going to think about things you're already doing that are right and try and do more of those or go back to doing some things you used to do that were good for your health. So with these things in mind, we're going to talk about five different things you can do to help you to age well. The first one relates to lifestyle factors. Now, we all know that we probably should eat well, exercise more, drink less alcohol but we know these things are in fact very important to help you to age well. If we think about your diet first of all, yes, you need to eat more fruit and vegetables, you need to have lean meats, low sugar and low uh, fat diet. And you might have heard the Mediterranean diet is uh, particularly good for brain health. So if you like to cook creatively and you want to try something new, I highly recommend you look up a Mediterranean style diet and try and use those recipes uh, in your day-to-day uh, -day life. However, for a lot of us though, doing something new actually makes it much more difficult to change things. So instead, just keep it simple. Think about the sorts of meals you like to eat, that you like to cook, that you know are healthier options and have those, have those meals more often. Or think about other meals you don't have that often but you really enjoy that you know are healthy and try and put those into your diet as well. Some other things you can do to help yourself to eat more healthily is to make sure you only buy healthy foods in the shop so that when you're rummaging for that snack there are only healthy options in your cupboard. You can of course try and make sure you always have lunch prepared. Take a sandwich, Re resist the temptation to buy lunch out and make sure you only keep your treats to every now and then. If we think about exercise, we all know we should exercise more. And in fact, the research tells us that 10,000 steps a day will reduce your risk for dementia by 50%. But the, the latest re research actually says that your pace the, the speed at which you walk is actually particularly important. So in fact, a very brisk walk for 15 or 20 minutes is actually a, equivalent to the 10,000 steps. Now, you don't have to walk if you don't want to. So if you prefer to, to do any other sort of sport exercise, go ahead and do that. You might like to just put music on and dance around the house. Anything that builds up a sweat, anything that requires you to lift weights is a good thing for you to do. If you're someone that's not used to exercising, it can be hard to get into it. So what you can do to help with this is to exercise with a purpose. Walk to the shop to buy the milk or to buy the coffee. Walk to the library to borrow a book. Or ask a friend if they will go on a walk with you. That way, 
exercise may feel more enjoyable for you. Of course, you should keep your alcohol levels low, we know that, so try and substitute uh, water in between an alcoholic drink, or again, just try and buy less alcohol, because when there's less alcohol at home, it's harder to drink as much. You know smoking is not ideal, and so really, if you haven't already, it's time to think about stopping smoking. Now, for many of you who are smokers, you have probably tried to quit before, but don't give up. Quitting smoking takes often multiple attempts, but you can do it. So talk to your GP about strategies that you can use to help you to quit this time for good. And the research also tells us that sleep is important. So in fact, six hours or more of adequate sleep is important for your health. If you're having trouble sleeping, you can talk to your GP, but you can also try some other simple relaxation strategies as well. So try and think of some simple things you can do. Don't make it complicated to improve your lifestyle. Now, interestingly, research now tells us that how much you participate in society and how much social interaction you have is actually really important for ageing well. So the Harvard Study of Adult Development, which is one of the longest um, longitudinal studies running in the world, has actually found that the people who were happiest and healthiest at age 80 were the ones who had the strongest connections to others in their 50s. So if you're in your 50s, make sure you're spending lots of time with your friends and building those connections because they are the sorts of people that you're probably going to hang out with in your later life. We also know that for older adults, the frequency of social contact is particularly important. So the more older adults see other people, the more they're engaged in social groups, community groups, religious groups, um, the better their cognitive health, the better their physical health, and the better their emotional health. So if you're not getting as much social contact as you think you should, think about who it is that you might be able to contact. Who are long lost friends that you can pick up the phone and give a call to? Who are people that you see in your community that you could go and have a coffee with? What are the local groups that happen in your community? Reach out to a neighbour, ask them which groups they belong to. If you're not sure of groups in your area, try your local news, uh, newspaper, call your local council, check notice boards at the library and at the supermarket. Who, they often post information about groups in your community. But the tip is, don't wait for other people to contact you. Be proactive. You be the one, jump on the phone and make those social arrangements. Do that for your own health. Emotional resilience is a really important part of ageing well. In fact, as you age, you often uh, experience a number of different physical challenges or societal challenges that can make it sometimes difficult to manage your emotions. So if you want to maintain good health in later life, there's three main things I'm going to suggest. First of all, is to try and keep things in perspective. I know that's hard, but ask yourself questions like, you know, what else have I coped with before in my life that reminds me that I am resilient and that I can get through this? Ask yourself, what advice would I give a friend in this situation? What would I tell them to do? Usually the advice we give our friends is actually very good. We just often need to listen a little more to our own advice. And also ask yourself, does this happen to other people? Is this normal? Do other people feel like this? Will I be okay? The second tip, when things are tough in life, is to do more pleasant things. So it's much easier to deal with stress and difficult times when you give yourself some, some hope and some uh, pleasant feelings. So do things that make you feel good. Simple things. Go for a walk, have a cup of tea in the, in the sun, uh, put on some nice music, put on your favourite uh, CD or record, um, read your favourite book. Do those things for yourself, take time to look after yourself. And thirdly, if you're finding that you are struggling with your mental health, seek help. Talk to friends or family, talk to your GP, because there are lots of things that we can do to help you to manage feelings of anxiety, depression and loneliness. So mental stimulation is another thing that we know is really important for ageing well. I know you know this, but you do need to keep challenging your brain. So for some people, that means going back and studying, 
learning a language, picking up a new skill, or learning a musical instrument. But like I said at the start, you can also keep it really simple. So you can do puzzles, crosswords, read new books, watch documentaries, go to talks, watch movies. Any of these things challenges your brain and actually keeps it active. Try and keep using simple things that you can do every single day to challenge your brain. So for instance, when you go to the shops, try and memorise your shopping list. Instead of looking at the list, try and remember as many things as you can before you look at the list again. All of these things will help you to maintain your cognitive ability and therefore help you to age well. And the final thing we're going to talk about today is a little less simple, a little more tricky, and that is just to remind you to continue to manage any existing health conditions you have. Don't avoid the problem, be proactive about it. So that means make sure you're managing your any diabetes, um, your blood sugar levels, maintaining a healthy weight, managing cholesterol, blood pressure, and so forth. Because these things, of course, increase the risk that you'll have further problems down the track. So, in summary, today we've been talking about some really simple things you can do to help you age well. By doing these things, it reduces your risk for dementia, stroke, frailty, falls, cancer, cardiovascular disease, and a bunch of other things as well. And of course, doing these things will also just make you feel better. So, remember it's never too early to start, so start today. Keep it simple. Don't have to have elaborate plans. Just do something easy that you can do each day that will make a difference. And go for easy wins. Do more of the things you already like doing that you know are good for you. So if you can focus on good lifestyle habits, more social activity, more mental stimulation, maintaining your mental health, and man managing any other health conditions, you're off to a really good start. Good luck.